Hello friends, ha hacky? happy October. I'm Kayla, I'm getting a cold, and I have a quarterly update. So we're combining my stats, I don't know what I'm doing, um, from the last three months, and then these are all my stories from the last three months, everything that I read, and then this is all of the books that I read when I hold them in my little, not little, stupid heavy stacks every month. I cut off my face for a reason. If you saw what was happening above the stack, it's like me grimacing in pain. Um, I combine all of that into this stat board. So let's run through it. I read a total of 69 books in the last three months, um, which was 22,435 pages, which amounts to about 243 pages a day. For anyone who always asks me how much I read, that's how much I read. It's like three to four hours a day. This isn't in my stats board, but my average rating for the month was, or for the season, or for the quarter, <laughs> I'm getting sick, uh, was a 3.4. If you take away all of my rereads that were guaranteed fives, it was actually a 3.3. Um, and here's how, there's a place on here somewhere where you can see how my ratings stack up. And you'll see that it's pretty even between my five stars, four stars, and two stars which like seems good, but that's a really high for two stars, I feel. And then my three stars is the largest stack. I think it's always the largest stack, but this one seems smaller than normal. And then I had three one stars. As far as what I was reading, like where it came from, 14%, no, 14 of the books. So 20%, I think, of my reading uh, came from books that I already owned, from my TBR shelf, things that I owned before the beginning of the year, 44% of the books that I read in this quarter were bought in this quarter. So I did purchase a lot, which is not new for me. And 23% came from the library, which I think is a good consistent number for me. Um, half of my reads were purely physical, just staring at the words on a page. Half of them, some portion of it was experienced via audiobook. And then the rest solely audiobooks. Like when I pick up a book, I never look at it and I just purely listen to it. Um, half of those came from my library, like Libro, no, Libby, and then half came from Libro or Everand. So thank you so much for supporting my um, obsession with those because when you use my link, I get more books to listen to. <laughs> my biggest genre of the quarter was horror and then journal fiction and fantasy falling closely behind. Um, mystery and romance made strong showings. But there was no genre that like swept all of my best reads. All of my five stars don't belong to a certain category. I feel like it was spread evenly. I read equally terrible horror and great horror this season. Good fantasy, mediocre fantasy. And then the little um, one that's just split into two authors that I've read from before is higher than ones that I'm reading for from for the first time. And I do like that ratio. I think a lot of my favorites came from authors that I've read before. Actually, no. Maybe it was actually perfectly split. Now let's talk about videos I posted. Here they all are. Oh my God, it's my face like 24 times. I posted 24 videos that were a mix of vlogs and sit down content. There were two book club live shows and a bunch of stuff for members. We did a Raven Cycle read along that we're still in the middle of. I posted like a silly quiz. We had a movie night. There are code names, game nights happening with Rob. We're doing another one in a couple days. Um, lots of live hangouts, but my screen is too full to include them all. Oh, we also had a little readathon, uh, the third of four installments. So join for the next one that's coming up next year. It's all about reading backlist stuff. And then to go through all of the videos and the things that I loved from them, one of the videos that I did, the one where I read the most books was reading the top 10 of the New York Times best books of the 21st century so far. I read nine books in that vlog. I only have four of them here because they're decided to return to the library. And my favorites to come out of that video are 2666 by Roberto Bolaño and The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson. I did a shark vlog where I read books about sharks or that had sharks on the cover. And I didn't end up with a five star from this one. I did a series of vlogs for Summerween, which is a summer readathon that I love participating in. My favorites, plural, from that readathon were Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay and Every Time I Go on Vacation, Someone Dies by Catherine Mack. These are some of the authors that I've read from before who I ended up loving again. I did a video where I had to watch an old book haul and then if I 
didn't want to read the book still on my TBR, I had to take a shot or I could read the book. And this was my least successful vlog I think I've done all year. There was a video where I was reading a bunch of books that fit into my goals. I have goals. I have goals. Can you believe it? Goals and ambitions for life. I'm missing a couple from this stack. I think they must be library books. But um, my reread of Dune and Dune Messiah went very well. But they're not new five stars, so I don't really include them in like favorites of the year. I read a bunch of books in this series. I am continuing to find a five star from every year I've been alive. I completed three more. I am missing some books from here for sure. Um, but the five stars that I found are all right here, all from authors that I had never read from before. The Shadow of the Wind by Carlo Ruiz Zafon. Did I show you that? Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. And Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson. Then I read some horror books based on the blurbs of authors who I have similar opinions to. Unfortunately, this vlog was a bit of a flop, which makes me question the entire blurb situation. Like, should I continue that series or should I give up on it? it? Didn't go terribly. It just like wasn't the most successful horror of my life, which is what I kind of went into it thinking. Um, this video you, you never saw. It was reading romance until I get a five star. I didn't get the five star and I didn't want to finish the video. Not because like any, they were all three stars and I just like stopped caring about my own content. Then I did a video where I read haunted house books and went to a haunted house. Not really, but will that make you click on it? Um, I'll link it down below. I'll link all of the videos down below because I always do. And my favorite from all of the haunted things was this lovely five star. We used to live here by Marcus Clewer. One of my latest vlogs is reading books that I think I'm going to hate or love. And I picked things that I thought would be like one or two stars or five stars. And I was mostly correct, but I didn't actually end up with a five. I ended up with a lot of twos. And my standout, though it wasn't a five, was Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. Shocking, the masses. It was a high risk, high reward type of um, concept. And I was rewarded enough because I'm very interested to continue the Magnolia Parks series. I read three books for my Literally Dead Book Club, mostly monthly thriller horror mystery book club. And my favorite from here was I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones, surprising no one. I also am working on the project with my channel members where we're rereading The Raven Cycle. I have no idea where I put The Raven Boys, but I've posted those three blogs and they're all five stars. The Raven King is up next. Don't think it's gonna be a five. Never was, never will be. Then Zapped in the Zinnias. This I posted a video for where I read it and tried to solve the mystery. I want to be able to solve the mystery and I never can, but not for lack of trying. And then these ones I just read on my own. And I want this stack to be bigger next year. That's I think my number one goal for next year is for my split of like vlogged books to books that I'm not reading like to talk about to be more like 60 40 because right now it's like 90 10. No, maybe like even getting to 80 20. I just want to have more books, especially to talk about in wrap ups that I haven't already vlogged because I'm starting to feel silly about posting wrap ups and just saying the same things that I talked about in the vlogs because I also don't want my wrap ups to like drag out and be an hour long. So as much as I could sit and think about more of my thoughts on the same books I've already talked about, I don't know if that's the best use of your or my time. So for this to be the only books like in an entire quarter that I read, not specifically for videos, Although like I kind of did because, well, not for videos, but this was from my member's TBR jar. Wait, what else was from my member's TBR jar? There should be one a month. Oh yeah, for September, it was a shadow of the wind. For August, it was Lonely Castle in the Mirror. Oh yeah, a sentimental education. That's why I can't find it here. And then this one also, I didn't read because it was my own choice. I was like playing a game with Rob in a live show. And he said, if I win, like him, he said, if I win, I get to choose a book that you read. And then he picked this. So there was really only three things this entire season that I just read with no like goal to post about. And it's not that I feel like I'm not reading things that I like or that I want to read. I'm always reading things that I want to read. Like I base videos around the things that I already want to read. 
but I feel like my mind is so like content focused and sometimes I just want to pick up like random things and that should have been fixed by me having the goal of making all of my vlogs four books instead of like five to ten but then somehow this quarter this is my issue it's me I kept wanting to add more and more books. So I was like, I'm doing a shark vlog. I'm not satisfied with just four. I want to read six. And then for the New York Times, like I'm not just going to read the top four. Like I need to read 10 because it's just a nice number. Okay, so I'm working against myself. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Oh, and the five star from here was Brat. Was it? Wait, was it? I just called it a five star. I feel like mm, I talked about my wrap up that maybe this isn't a five, but maybe it should be. I think officially it is. Well, you heard it here first, so it must be true. Some people maybe would make these quarterly videos and they'd just be a lot punchier. And I think because I post um, TikToks now about my monthly things and quarterly things, I just feel more um, welcome to yap here about nothing because we're all just friends. And I'm not trying to like entertain you. I just am letting you in on my life journeys <laughs> and my thought process. Here are here or here here are all of my brand new five stars from the last season and i think it's a beautiful stack now i'm just going to go off the top of my head of the five that i want to tell you are my official total favorites i mean hell let's just start with brat okay this is brat by gabriel smith it is it is a story of a haunting but not necessarily a traditional one. You have an insufferable main character, Gabriel. He's pretty directionless. His life, is, okay, his skin is crumbling and I think it's because his life is crumbling and it's because his house is crumbling. His parents are recently deceased or sick. Um, and he is taking care of this house. He's getting it ready to maybe sell it and he's taking care of the plants that are taking over the house and he's also uncovering a bunch of like writing there's a there's stories within here like an essay from an ex of his a memoir from his mother that she was writing scripts from his father and every time he reads them they kind of change it's not uh i don't know how to explain it it's just no matter how I pitch it, I just don't think it's going to be exactly what you expect because it's also not like this really um, deep explanation of all of these things. It's just what you glean from pages that look like this. It's a quick read. There's lots of dialogue, especially between um, him and his brother. They use a lot of homophobic and ableist language at each other. The banter between them um, is rooted in just like horrible things that they're saying, which is paired with like the horrible things that you're reading about with like gross, gory, like his skin peeling off and like describing his genitals and like just weird stuff. And then it's paired with, you know, the back and forth with just these awful people and the things they're saying to each other that they think are funny. It's just hard to get across I think why I liked it so much. It is the writing style and it's the way that what he's reading is reflecting his life and is changing a little bit. It's just a really interesting story. I absolutely loved the writing. The people are just deplorable and it's very icky and it's hard to recommend because everything that I'm saying, everyone else could say in a negative way. Like obviously the people are awful and you're reading like awful stuff. It's hard to have any empathy for characters. And I understand why that would be like not a good book for anybody else. It pulled off exactly what it was trying to do. It was really pointless and I had a great time. In my number four spot is Every Time I Go On Vacation Someone Dies by Katherine Mack. This is one that's gotten mixed reviews. I'm not gonna say like this is your new favorite fun wacky mystery because I know it's not for everyone. It is a little bit predictable but for some reason I just had a really great time with it. You're following this woman whose name I can't even remember, Eleanor Dash and she writes this book series, this mystery book series based on things that have kind of happened to her and this guy. And because she wrote about this guy, he has investment in the series. He makes money off of the series. She's ready to kill him off. And while they're on this trip together um, with other authors on this little tour, someone is threatening to take his life. And they just go on this like kind of adventure. But it's also more about the relationships and all of the people 
who are there, all the other authors and the people they're related to, and it's you trying to figure out who's threatening who, who's in danger, um, there's death. But it's also kind of light and cozy. There's romance in it. I'm excited to continue in the series. Uh, it's very much written to the reader with the author being aware that this is being read and talks to us and shares things with us. And again, the writing is, I think the writing of all of these is the reason I liked them all. Not even necessarily the plot at the end of the day. We Used to Live Here by Marcus Cleaver is in my number three spot of my favorites of the quarter. This is a haunted house story. It's cosmic. If you like things that are kind of unexplained and unsatisfying by the end, you could dig this one. There's this couple who moves into this house and a family arrives. One of the women is still there. One of the women is away. And um, the one who's more of a pushover is the one who's at home. And she lets in this family who shows up at the door um, who say, one of us used to live here and we want to show the family around. And then suddenly they won't leave. And one of their ch children goes missing in the house. They have to find her. And then it just kind of descends into madness and it's very unsettling, the writing. I don't feel scared by a lot of books. This one like really freaked me out because I didn't know what was coming. The jump scares were, were occasionally sprinkled in, um, which was very effective. It was just a little ominous the entire time. Loved the atmosphere. The characters just get so disoriented in this house. And it was great. It was a great time. In my ooh, second spot is gonna be Autobiography of Red by Ann Carson. This is told in verse, but I don't know, like I like books that are told in verse. A lot of times it is, I don't know how to explain it, very clear that it's written in verse. Like the way that you read it is stilted and broken up. But for some reason, this one still read like a traditional novel, especially if you listen to the audiobook. I know I did for portions of it um, and I really liked it and it just sounded like a normal story. So if you are apprehensive of the way that it's written, I think this is a pretty um, welcoming one. I don't know the proper word, but it's about this boy, Gary, and it's based in Greek mythology, him and Heracles. And he is like, just a regular boy. It's a coming of age story. Um, he experiences abuse. He um, finds a passion for art. He meets these men and um, people come in and out of his life and they create these bonds. But he's not just a boy. He like has wings, like he's a beast. And it's just a part of the story. It feels fabulous in that way that it's not often mentioned. It doesn't seem like he's that uh, abnormal. It's just an accepted part of his life and the story. And it was just stunning. It's really short, so I don't know what more to say about it, but you're following him from childhood into adulthood and seeing everything that he's up to. I loved it. I loved the writing. And my favorite written book of the quarter was I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. I'm so glad that I got this, like that I understood it, that I, that I'm, in on it because I know this didn't work for so many people and it was just written for me. I think it's very reminiscent of My Heart is a Chainsaw and the Indian Lake trilogy, which I love, but it's more easily recommendable to me because you're not just in the head of this one obsessive character, but it still does exactly what Stephen Graham Jones wants to do with recognizing, appreciating the horror genre, the slasher genre in particular, and people who love it and people who get all of the like inside references and jokes, but it has more regular action than the Indian Lake trilogy, well, especially like the first book. And it's just this really meta, unique take on slashers because the main character you're reading from is a killer, but doesn't want to be. And it just feels like the author is constantly winking at the audience. He's like, did you get that? Did you see that? Like, do you see what I'm doing there? It's very self-aware. It's very fun. It is, it is, is it my favorite Stephen Graham Jones? Maybe it's my favorite Stephen Graham Jones. I think I need to reread it and my heart is a chainsaw before I commit to that, but it was just so fun and it was so unique and interesting. I had such a good time with it. And that is my number one favorite of the quarter and is obviously gonna be in my favorites of the year. I mean, unless somehow 10 more books come out of the woodwork in the final three months of the year and get five stars and, and win over that. That would be incredible, but 
I also feel really good about some of these being in my favorites of the year. And then shout out to my other five stars that didn't quite make that list, but still love them a lot. And that my friends is my quarterly wrap up update stats and favorites. I can't believe nine months have already gone by this year. I say this every time, but like time is moving too quickly. It's concerning me. I'm really glad I've had some favorites and I would really love to hear what your favorites of the last couple months have been. I know a lot of people are in some slumps right now. I too, like I have some favorites, but the last month of my reading was not spectacular. So I feel like I'm in a bit of a lull. If you are too, I'm wishing us the best of luck for these last three months and we read incredible things. And I will see you in a couple days with something else. Bye.